and uh, good evening to everybody so let me introduce sumit sumit tripathi is our classroom program at time nasik center a uh, student of classroom program for 2019 secured 99.7 percentile in cat and has been selected at iim bangalore welcome sumit to this discussion session thank you uh, so let me start by asking you this there are a lot of people who do not know you so can you you know this Tell them about your own career path in terms of your educational qualification, in terms of your work experience. Before we look at all the other dimensions of the calculation. Right. So, hi everyone. I'm Sumit, and uh, yeah, I have had a varied experience in education. I did my schooling in Mumbai, early schooling. Then I went to Abu Dhabi, where I did my 10th and 12th. In both times, I secured close to 89 percentage. But uh, I was in CBSE board. Then I actually went to Canada for a couple of years, where I was trying to get a degree in uh, chemical engineering, but that did not work out. So I came back to India, went to Manipal. I did my mechanical engineering over there. I secured a pretty good GPA of 9.4 over the last over the four years, and then I got employed in uh, placed in AVB India Limited in Nasik. And uh, after working a couple of years, I decided I have to pursue an MBA, and I joined Time. And uh, yeah, as you guys know, I did well, and I'm now in uh, I'm Bangalore. Right. Uh, Sumit, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions in the mind of students, or a lot of dilemma in the mind of students as to when they should take up an MBA program. You know, there are conflicting views. Some people talk about that you should take an MBA program just after you complete your education degree, educational qualification. Some people talk about that you should take up an MBA program after getting some years of work experience. So when did it come into your mind as to I want to do an MBA program? Yeah, I I, I thought about doing an MBA program after one year of uh, work experience, and in my uh, personal view, uh, going through the entire process, I think it's best that people at least work for uh, twelve months minimum, and uh, then do an MBA. But to, uh, to be completely honest with you, a lot of uh, A lot of institutions they value work ex more than of more than 24 months. So if you're able to do two two and a half years of uh, work ex and then get into an MBA, that's that's great. Like you should, two years of experience, in my opinion, should be what people will be looking at. So uh, let's say if there is an aspirant who gets a job, let's say, and they catch it after six months. So do you think it is viable to take up a job for six months, give up CAT, you know, take the CAT exam, and then try for an MBA entrance program, or you should think that he prepares for six months, focuses on CAT preparation alone, and then you know, go to an MBA program? Uh, I did not understand completely. Like you're saying, he has just passed out and got on a job, or is yes, he just passed out. Let's say 2020. Mm -hmm. He's he has a job offer in front of him. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is, if he takes up the job offer, he gets selected into an IIM next year. There would be barely seven eight months of work experience. Good. Yeah. So I have actually had this question even from a lot of people from my family. Uh, a lot of my cousins who have graduated this year. So I tell them that don't give this year if you have just passed out. At at the minimum, give next year or the year after that. Get into work. Get some work experience. See, MBA is all about like you know how you're gonna go into the workplace and then uh, and then manage things over there. So before doing that, you should at least have a little idea of how work happens, you know how the process of uh, how the process works in any company. So it's best to get, as I said before, to get some work experience and uh, then then go ahead and uh, give that. Okay, so what I think, what Sumit is also trying to highlight over here is that if you have a job offer in front of you, take up the job offer, work and prepare for a CAT family with it, and uh, probably no. I am I am saying that don't give CAT twenty twenty. If you are if you just got a job, give CAT twenty twenty one at 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 the start. If you want to give it just for the heck of it, then take it. No issue. No. If you have no issue, no. Job to take. जॉब अभी तो नहीं छोड़ो अगर अच्छा हो गया तो देख लेना क्या होता है बट आई थिंक की वर्क इट्स यू शुड टेक वर्क इट्स बिकॉज देर इज फाइव आफ्टर यूर डन विद योर कैट देर इज फाइव टू टेन परसेंट ऑफ योर वेटेज इन योर ओवरऑल स्कोर दैट इज गिवन टू वर्क इट्स 
भाई अभी क्या था कैट आपका फोर्टी परसेंट था और कहीं कहीं जगह पे टेन परसेंट है सो so, आपका वर्क है जिसमें आपको कुछ मेहनत नहीं करना है खाली ऑफिस जाना है दैट इज गिविंग यू ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ स्कोर विच यू कैनॉट गेट फ्रॉम कैट विच विदाउट इवन वर्किंग हार्ड टूर्ड राइट सो वाई डू वॉन्ट वेस्ट दैट अपॉर्चुनिटी दैट इज माई पॉइंट But if if the question is that if someone has been working for say two years and uh, say now today he is thinking that my job for him he gave cat in 2020, now it all depends upon how your job is. If you are working say 12 hours a day, then in that case it's going to be very very difficult to score well in cat, mm-hmm. right? And if you are thinking that no matter what, उधर ना खास्ता जो cat में जो college मिलेगा मैं वही लूँगा, तो छोड़ दो फिर वो You then give your best towards cat, right. right? Then because at the minimum you need three hours of prepare of studies every day, right? right? And if you are, and thing is that if you are in office, even I okay, I had I was somewhat lucky that my work timing was from nine to six, and there was no pressure on me, like uh, no verbal pressure on me to continue after six. Right. So I would leave at six, right. and even then I would feel tired Go, after going home. I would not feel like opening the book. Mm-hmm. Because then I take a break and then start studying at either nine o'clock and study from nine to eleven or eleven thirty, mm-hmm. or go to sleep early and then wake up at four o'clock and then study in the morning. Right. right. Because just after work also you cannot uh, study. Mm-hmm. So you have to figure out how how much like uh, latitude your work is giving you so that that you are able to study. But if you have decided you have to do MBA no matter what, like I decided I'm going to do MBA no matter what. Mm-hmm. So if I thought that if I'm not able to study because of my work, I was sure I was I was sure I'll leave. It. Okay. Right. So I would say the same. Like if you have decided that you don't have to do MBA no matter what, leave, prepare, maximize your chances to get into a good. Right. Because I think the challenge also right now is that although your company was flexible enough to allow you to leave after six o'clock. In most of the corporate that we're talking right now, the normal working hours are 11 to 12, right? And uh, after working for 11 and 12 hours, I think it becomes difficult to you know prepare for an examination like that. Correct. Right. So I think what he is uh, advising to a lot of people who are watching us that if you are working and you are helping and you have decided upon that, hey, I have to do CAT, I have to do MBA, I have to do MBA. Better idea would be leave your job if you don't get enough time and then prepare for an examination like that. Because as he's also very rightly pointed out, that that is not a part-time kind of an affair, yeah. right? It needs requires a lot of dedication. It requires a lot of preparation uh, from a candidate side because it's, it's a multi-stage process. Like right? you have to prepare for written tests, three sections in a written test almost. You right. also have to prepare for GDs and your PIs. You have, you have to read yeah. a lot like mm-hmm. that. I think I'll come up. Yeah, it's not just preparing like doing mathematics. Right. You have to find out time to read. You have to find out time to listen. Like you, you have to give time, and uh, so you have to make time first. And so, if you have decided that yes, yeah, it's, it's cat or bust, then go for it and right. leave your job. Right. I think so. He has been very, very clear about, uh, and it's also uh, you know there are a lot of confusion which is there in the mind of a lot of the people who are watching us as to you know whether we should continue working or whether we should you know. Leave the job and prepare, focus wholeheartedly on cat. I think that's a way which he has done. Focus completely on cat, and and you will know the results, right? So, uh, so with all the you have talked about it in terms of your company provided you with enough latitude in terms of time that you can leave at six o'clock and there you had time to study. So how do you manage this overall? Because you know when you are working, you also have those pressures of job. You know it's not that you leave at six o'clock and like, you shut down. Right? There are constant calls and all of those things you have to manage. So how do you manage that work? Versus study balance. Yeah. So as I was saying, my friend was lucky that he, my job, I had a lot of pressure. Nahi tha. But that said, to achieve something, you have to sacrifice somewhere. Right. So, like in any job, like I said, that I had the freedom to leave at six o'clock, mm-hmm. but it was not uh, looked favorably on me that I leave at six o'clock every time. Like the right. moment it's six o'clock, six ten, this guy is out of here. Right. So uh, there was some negative perceptions about me at work. But as I said, like for me, that did not matter. Because for me, it was not you have to please my boss or my boss's boss. For me, it was like I have to go home, clear my mindset, and I have to go and study. So no matter what people talk about me, actually, what will happen? I tell you what happened. This this year, like at, in March, they said that yeah, you would not get that that much increment. And I said I don't care because March I had already resigned. Because I'm going for this thing, right? 
So when my goal was MBA, it did not matter to me what is happening at work. Mm-hmm. And I had decided that if they put too much pressure on me, like once or twice my boss said, "Why do you leave at six? Mm-hmm. So I told him, "He said I am uh, like I have only here since morning. Like I have to somehow manage him." Mm-hmm. But if there was more pressure on me that you stay till seven, stay till seven thirty, I would have quit. That's what I said. I was lucky that I was not put a pressure. I was not put pressure. And I. And I mean, we are, you know, when you talk about this whole idea of staying back to please the bosses, that, that's what is a typical culture in organizations right now. Right. In fact, uh, your boss expects you to sit till the time the boss himself leaves. So if the boss leaves by nine o'clock, he would expect you to sit by nine o'clock. Right. And people do it for the performance, appraisal, career growth, so on and so forth. Right. So I think uh, what also Sumit is bringing forth is that you have to be very, very clear as to what do you want, whether you want CAT, whether you want MBA program, or you want performance appraisal, you want career growth. Both of them managing simultaneously is very very difficult. Very difficult. There are people who can do it, but I was not able to do it. Like I, I'm only speaking from my experience. Mm-hmm. So I think you need to take a call as to what what is more important for you. You know, uh, whether you're looking at the March appraisal, April promotion, or whether you're looking at future growth in terms of taking up an MBA program in an institute like an IIM, ABC, and IK. Or you're taking up MBA just for as a second option. If job nahi to MBA ya job acha nahi to MBA. Right. Even if you don't get into IIM or even let's say top IITs, you get in like a tier tier below. Excuse me. Abhi jitne log honge, most of the people yahan pe at least ek saal ka experience hoga ya do saal ka experience hoga. Aap log kamare honge 20 se 25,000 maybe 30,000 per month. But if you're able to get into even a decent MBA college, your earning will multiply. Right. So, and then, what happens when you get into a lot of people who are seen? Now, CS, CS, let's go. Let's come into core uh, because many people are engineers. When you get into core sector, you have to be here for three years. After that, you have to shift your company. Shift karna bahut hai. So, for example, I was in an electrical company. Uh, we make electrical products. So, if I continue for four or five years, it will be very difficult for me to go to oil and gas industry or some other industry. Mm-hmm. So MV also what it offers you is it offers you a chance to uh, a second uh, win towards your career. That yeah, if you're not like if you're not satisfied where you are, you want to grow even further. You can go into higher studies and then further your uh, further your career. Life. I think what it offers you in terms of is mobility, right? Mobility. So, yes. Yeah. So when you are an engineer, let's say you are an electrical engineer, you tend to stay only in the electrical industry. But an MBA in finance will probably offer offer you a complete canvas. You can take up investment banking. You can go into corporate finance. You can take up any sector that you want to work on. I think it's a very valid point which Sumit has raised, and I think we need to deliberate on this as to you know what kind of career growth, what kind of career path that we want to chart up on. Now another question, Sumit, which I think a lot of students who are watching us would be facing, and you know since CAT is a very long path. People join, prepare for CAT for two years, one, one and a half years. There are highs and lows. Correct. What were your own highs and lows? Okay. Let's talk about highs first and then lows and then we can take it forward. Yeah, I, one of the good things or bad things about me is that I am highly self-critical. So I never felt that I had like huge highs. Like, like there was some, I felt like there was some moderate successes that one of the mock cats, I had uh, gotten more than 99 percent time, so uh, that gave me some confidence. Right. Then we have a uh, Jyoti ma'am over here, and then she asked me once to present, talk about English, about how to learn English in front of the class. So that gave me some confidence. So there was some confidence building uh, points, but I never felt that yeah, I had a high point that yeah, now it's just going great. Because I was always critical. Every time I, I would do something, I'd be like, okay, abhi itna aur padna bacha. Right. right. So I could, I was never being able to like uh, to say ki, yeah this is this is like I've done. It. Mm-hmm. So but low points I can talk about like uh, I was not like I don't know what to think about myself. Me I was not a bad employee. Okay. <laughs> so when people when my boss used to be like okay you have to go meet the customers <laughs> then I would go meet the customer. I would not say no. So uh, cat is in November. And uh, September and October, I was asked to go to Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand for a period of 10 days. And I was traveling every day, hotel, and then meeting customers, coming back. So those 10 days, I was not able to prepare even a little bit. 
So now this is just now one month to go to CAT. Now I came back, gave, gave, and that time I think then AIM CATs were every week, which are every two weeks. So I gave an AIM CAT, I got horrible score, and no problem. Gave the next AIM CAT, again got a horrible score. And that kind of smashed my confidence. I was like, yeah, now this is not happening. Uh, like one month to go, and I'm barely just breaking a hundred in the AIM CATs. So what I did was I was like, okay, I'm not going to give an impact till I get my confidence back. So next two weeks I considered studies, tried to get my quant and uh, logical reasoning back on track because that's where I used to do smarts. And then final two impacts I gave and I scored well, and so I got my confidence back. And uh, so yeah, that was my low point during uh, my preparation. <laughs> When we talk to students, uh, we realize that is also a psychological battle. Yes. Then it's not you know, completely an academic battle that we are talking about. So I wanted to focus on two different dimensions. One is the academic part of coming out of loads, and second one is the psychological part of coming out of loads. And what I also feel is that academically, yes, you can come out, but then psychological part has to happen first before the academic part happens. Yes. Right? So, what did you psychologically do to remain motivated? That's the first thing. And when you got two bad ACAT scores, because that happens with a lot of students, right? So, and it's not only a Sumit Tripathi kind of a thing, you know. And I almost every student gives and they get one or two bad ACAT scores, and then they are extremely worried about whether they should actually give that or not. Right. You know, forget about next two or three ACAT. They are worried about CAT be dena hai ya nahi So, how do you win that psychological battle against yourself? Uh, we are going back to motivation. So my first motivation has to come from within. And once you have decided to do CAT, to CAT. Do CAT will be alright. If you are going to get a 60% you are going to get a 60% you are going to get a 70% you are going to get a 70%. You have to do it because you have to do it. Now that you have to, that you should not be away from. When you have given, you have decided you are going to give, you are going to give it. Because I, I can tell you that Anytime you do further studies, you only invest in yourself. Right? Chat on Kisibi College Maja, which we call you're investing in yourself. And whenever you invest in yourself, your result will always be good. Right? So when up Jitne log yape hai, jitne log yap time at the minute decide to kiya cat can so to look cat do no matter name cat me kasa or kasa name. So you ye to a palace is your gay cat dinner. Now, we are now. How do we get to the positive mindset? He cat to achieve it. So, my personal listing was just when I score scores come over, then I was like, okay, now I'm not gonna depend on him cat score, but for a personal uh, milestones. This is for example, our geometry get child, I think there are four uh, chapters of geometry, and geometry is a high, uh, sco high scoring area also, and a big weightage area also. So what I decided was that now I'm going to concentrate on these four, and I'm going to solve every question. And then I said that I made a time limit. That I have to solve every question in two minutes. In this way, I knew every question in two minutes would not be solved. But as I was like, I was able to solve. My speed was improving. My accuracy was improving. And with because of self improvement, I was like, okay, I can do it. Like I can do it. So that was one thing. And uh, secondly, with AIMCATs, what happens is that I have seen that with AIMCAT, I don't have to solve AIMCAT. And with AIMCATs, it's not just about giving an AIMCAT and getting the score, that is not what AIMCAT is for. That is what your exams are for. AIMCAT is to see ki what you are doing, how you are doing. So I personally spent six to seven hours, like three hundred ka AIMCAT. Hota hai. छह से सात घंटे में एम कार्ड के एनालिसिस में डाल कि मैंने कौन सा क्वेश्चन क्या किया है जो जो क्वेश्चन सॉल्व नहीं किया है उसको वापस सॉल्व करता था और एक फाउंड कि लॉर्ड ऑफ टाइम्स एम एम बुलू सॉल्व द क्वेश्चन क्या कहते हैं आप जब मैं उसको आराम से बाद में कर रहा हूँ दैन वाला आई � so if that is an issue, you just have to think, yeah, you can do it, you can do it. Tell yourself that you can do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? So, uh, so that was that was one thing. So don't get bogged down by any A lot of times, exams go bad. Sometimes, what happens? Night, exam, your mindset is not correct. 
Sometimes questions are harder than that. Sometimes MCATs came from a place where abhi the cover bhi nahi hoa classes mein. So there are a lot of issues why MCATs go wrong. But MCAT score is not an end all be all. At least in the I would say till MCAT five, don't worry about the score. Worry about what you can learn from the MCAT. When you did something wrong, go into a video lecture and see how they solved it. And try to understand why you are doing something rather than what you are doing. Right. Uh, I think uh, there are two very important points which Sumit has highlighted, and I want to take it forward and again put forth for all. First is the goal setting part. Right? That the grit has to be there. Unless you do have that grit, that focus, that perseverance, it's not going to work out because there would be lows, right? Yeah. And you know, it's not just we are talking about aim cards when you they say join an IAM. There might be low scores when you take a job. There are low points, right? but you don't leave a job just because there are low points. You're not going to leave an IAM just because there are low points, right? Yeah. Don't get a great, good grade in one of the subjects. It's not doing that you're going to leave the IAM tomorrow. So I think it's very necessary to understand that grit and perseverance are something which is very very important. And I think that's what makes Sumit different in terms of that. With all the work which he has to do, the time which he is he was engaging in, and mind you, he was in the marketing department, oh, yeah, right? right? So he was also constantly traveling, right. right? It was not only an office job which Sumit was engaged in. So traveling, you know, that whole pressure of traveling, tiredness which is also associated with it, in, you know, proper sleep nahi hota hai. So all of those issues are there, but the the focus is what is very very important. That's the first point which he has raised. Second, I think uh, that's something which we also wanted to talk, but since he has already raised it, the impact analysis. As the very rightly said, test is not only for test. You know, it's not about only marks. It's more important. How do you utilize that impact for your own growth? Correct. Right. Yes. So I think I can draw from Sumit and say, a mistake which I have seen in class, I think, oh, next time I will not do it. Yeah. Sometimes it happens. That's not a big deal. Right. Making a mistake in class is Not a big deal. Correct. एक पहले दो तीन एंड कार्ड जब दिया था तो ये लग रहा है यार स्कोर नहीं आ रहा स्कोर नहीं आ रहा कैसे होगा 94 परसेंट आ रहा है 91 परसेंट आ रहा है तो इश्यूज की मिस्टेक्स एंड कार्ड इज़ देयर टू मेक मिस्टेक्स मेक योर मिस्टेक्स लर्न फ्रॉम देम रीसॉल्व द क्वेश्चंस यू नो इट्स मोर अबाउट लाइक जस्ट जस्ट grind it up you know it's more about learning from what you learn yeah maybe you made mistakes two, two times but thing is ki if you go in uh, analyze tumne kya galti ki hai एक बार की दो बार की बाय थर्ड टाइम यू विल अंडरस्टैंड तुम वो गलती क्यों कर रहे इट माइट जस्ट बी की ओके आई गिव यू वंस फॉर एग्जांपल देयर वर टू और थ्री टाइम्स व्हेन माय एम कार्ड स्कोर्स वर प्रीटी लो लाइक आई गॉट फ्रॉम माय बाय माय स्टैंडर्ड्स लाइक 100 100 टू अस इट आई वाज सो थिंग इज की व्हाट वाज हैपनिंग वाज की आई वाज ड्यूरिंग द वीक डे आई वाज नॉट एबल टू प्रिपेयर मच सो वीकेंड आई वुड प्रिपेयर एंड देन मंडे को After coming from office, like at seven o'clock, I would give an in my in car from seven thirty to like ten thirty or eleven. Like that is the that is the time time frame. So us that time I'm so tired, right? So I realized that my scores are low because I'm very tired because the in car results would come out on Wednesday, and then on Wednesday when I would solve it again, I would be able to solve it, solve questions like this. So then the problem was timing. So then I started giving my in car either wake up early Monday morning and give it if I studied in. Uh, During the week, weekday, sorry, weekends, or give it on Sunday when I'm bored, relax. Mm-hmm. Or you know that, so that I'm able to score better. That uh, that came in my uh, that reflected in my results. So see, the mistake was not not uh, was not say uh, caliber. Mistake was not uh, not knowing a certain problem. Mistake was just my timing. Like I was giving the eight card at the wrong point of time. So uh, so yeah, so you make your mistakes. Think about why you're making mistake, and then all of you like are smart enough. If you suddenly decide to give cat, you will be able to self-analyze key where you are going wrong. Now is you know waking up early is a bigger challenge than actual cat. Most of the people who are uh, this thing, the determined, they will do it. Right, because yeah. most of the people what they do is typically, as you said, they appear at game cats at six o'clock, nine o'clock at night. And uh, obviously, the mind is tired by that point of time. Yeah. So I think all those who are watching and uh, you are used to being on Instagram and Facebook at twelve o'clock and one o'clock at night, you know, you need to change the habit at least for the next six months. Start waking up early, studying early in the morning. I think you might see some changes 
in your own impact score and more also in terms of the overall preparation right now if we come to cat 19 so let's specific now we gave, you gave all those in cats practice any challenges any surprises for you across the three sections let's say english dai learn and what okay so in a way that uh, see i would uh, we have spent a lot of time on this i think aim cards are one of the best features of times uh, preparation cycle so aim cards are generally much tougher than your cat 19 exam so i never felt that i am under prepared for the exam or from a matter of from the uh, institute perspective so nothing really surprised me as such when i went to the exam but there were two uh, mistakes that i made in my own uh, preparation that costed me a few marks i tell you to to a both of them first one was in the varc section okay so my strong point has always been rc so i i always decided there six passages had come that when i decided ki na panch hamesha kar do to main dekh ke hamesha panch kar deta uske baad aapke hote hain uh, aapke va ke 10 questions so that is something i have personally neglect kiya aur mere ko 10 mein se khali teen sahi mile to sath jo ki They, they should be high scoring there i lost marks because why i did not uh, practice a lot of sentence structuring and things like that which is very easy to do so those those parts are probably the easiest among your dilr and quant table and i think i neglected it out of maybe over confidence or maybe thinking that other areas are weaker and i give, need to give more importance over there so that was one of the mistakes that i made and second mistake that i made was i uh, second mistake that i made was i did not come to the center and give a lot of mock exams so i was not uh, used to the on screen calculator i only give two mock exams in in center so in the quant uh, section my speed was a little slower than what i would have liked and i probably could have uh, attempted at least two more questions in that section if i was more uh, used to the calculator okay Uh, I think there are a lot of questions which are pouring in. I think uh, what we like to highlight over here is that there is a separate Q and A section at the end. So we'll take up all your questions when we reach to the Q and A section. Uh, since you were already working, Sumit, any specific timetable that you followed, or did you set any month-wise goals for yourself? Okay, so this is because there is any major scarcity of time for working professionals. So this is an answer which a lot of teachers would really hate. <laughs> i would set goals and i would fail to meet them because of the fact that yeah, i had i had to move uh, because of as so i was in marketing department so i had to move around so i was unable to give the requisite amount of time to the uh, to the to the to the, the way i would have liked to plan my uh, study sir so i will answer this question in two ways first i'll say what i did and then how what i would do is that i had the opportunity to meet this guy uh, ikas or something i forget his name during my time uh, interview time with ayam shidam he got a 100% there so i can tell you what he did for his preparation but uh, he told us how he prepared so right so for what i was able to do because of lack of time in my case um, i know this is an excuse but yeah so what i did i should do was i used to decide ki these are the chapters that i'll try to finish right and uh, instead of saying ki yeah like i need to be done this much amount of portion or something or this many number of problems or like this is the number of chapters i need to finish and i was able to finish 80% of the chapters okay. say for example i thought about geometry right so geometry for uh, four chapters that coincided with my diwali vacation and so i got one back home and uh, diwali vacation happened so so that i had 10 days of uh, leave So in, ten, in those ten days, what I did was I finished those four chapters and then some DIL uh, chapters. So th- I I had seven chapters that I'll finish during that vacation, and I was able to do that. So whenever I would get time, I would make set a goal and try to finish that goal. But my real goal goal uh, oriented studies came in the last two months of my CAT preparation. At that time, I decided that it is CAT or bust. If there is anything, I would not go to office. I would like. I mean, CAD is number one. बाकी सब बात है. So, तो उस समय मैंने क्या डिसाइड किया था कि हर दो दिन में एक चैप्टर खत्म करना है on the weekdays. 
and on weekends har din mein ek chapter karna and it stuck to it and by chapter karna karna was basically aapko uh, read through the initial listing write down the formula and last ke jo uh, problems hai do every alternate problem so and i was able to uh, adhere to it and i uh, that is one goal that i set and i did that is something uh, and uh, the yes, upper one and the topper guy so what he did okay so a little this thing he gave cat in his college like he just he just had had a uh, they get a job offer so just mila tha so cat 19 mein he just passed out in 19 तो उसने क्या किया था उसने सारा का सारा जो अपना पोर्शन है ही फिनिश बाय अप्रैल तो ही वाज डन विद एवरी चैप्टर ऑफ क्वांट एवरी टाइप ऑफ चैप्टर फ्रॉम डीआईएलआर एंड वीआरसी ही शुड डू इट रीडिंग आफ्टर दैट व्हाट ही डिड वाज ही शुड गो ऑन डिफरेंट फोरम्स देयर देयर डिफरेंट फेसबुक ग्रुप्स देयर डिफरेंट गूगल ग्रुप्स फॉर कैट प्रिपरेशन सो ही शुड गो ओवर देयर एंड लुक एंड पीपल शुड पोस्ट क्वेश्चंस ये क्वेश्चन सॉल्व नहीं हो रहा कैसे करना है क्वेश्चन आई थिंक एवरी डे यू गेट लाइक हंड्रेड्स ऑफ क्वेश्चंस यू टेक दोस क्वेश्चंस एंड स्टार्ट सॉल्व एंड सो फॉर सो इन इन टर्म्स ऑफ अ गोल हिज गोल वाज एवरी मंथ जनवरी फेब्रुवारी मार्च एंड अप्रैल फिनिश सर्टेन परसेंटेज ऑफ हिज ऑफ हिज चैप्टर्स उसने सारा पोर्शन खत्म कर दिया बाय अप्रैल एंड आफ्टर अप्रैल वाज जस्ट प्योर प्रैक्टिस प्योर प्रैक्टिस एवरी डे फॉर 4 टू 6 आवर्स एवरी डे so that is how he prepared and he got in 100 percentile uh, in his campaign uh, right so i think a uh, uh, lot of you who have joined us in the month of may june and we have still have at minimum 6 months of cat preparation i think that's that's a methodology which you people can also follow you just need to fast track it a bit because you do not have time from january till the month of october and november but then you can obviously divide uh, the complete portion into parts and then start doing it Yeah, one thing I would like to interject is that uh, see whatever you are taught. I went to weekend batch because weekdays was not possible. I was not able to work. So weekend me we had classes on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So whatever was taught on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I would revise on the week on in the coming week. Like that, that had to happen. And and like plus further questions and try to learn ahead and things like that. and once you start studying you will see that there are certain chapters that are much easier than the others and you can focus more on the easier chapters because there is no mind it's not mandatory that you give every question in uh, in cat in, actually there are probably say 10 or 15 people who are able to give 90% to 95% of all the questions attempt all the questions in uh, in your cat exam so to get a good score you need to think about 70 to 80% of the uh, of the questions that you have to go for and you can choose with where you have to study where you want to put your put more effort but it is important ki you go through every chapter at least once to understand how how to do it and there are a few chapters for example your probability probability is a very tough uh, chapter even for someone who is from an engineering background did well in my mathematics and my sciences i had to give at least two weeks to that permutation combination and probability so take some more time for those two chapters other than other than some more time for geometry like these two things need your time invest in that and you will be rewarded when it comes to uh, your cats uh any easy chapters some that you would like to highlight so that there are a lot of people who would be looking for that but which are the easy ones let me finish them first so uh, any easy ones from your side i think uh, your number systems are very easy Uh, i'm not i'm not talking about the numbers one and two right right the number system where you have to convert from binary to hexadecimal to octo decimal or right. something like that that one is a very easy chapter your functions are quite easy mm-hmm. even though some questions might appear difficult but if you take up cat they don't ask very difficult questions from there so uh, then you have actually geometry is except for trigonometry is quite easy uh geometry also except for one or two type of questions where you have uh, triangles your your circle questions are quite difficult uh, quite easy area is very easy but you just have to put in time like if you go through all the questions and extra questions basically there's nothing new they can ask you if you have done it but first time when you're attempting it if it's difficult but uh go le lo kya kehte hain jo solution manual hai usse le lo ek baar solve kar lo you will see ki agla char question mein se do aise hi aaye right and when you do your cat exams you will see that this is a variation of those kind of questions only okay and one thing i would say is that uh, 
इन वेन वी वर लाइक बहुत सारा चीज जो बुक में है एक्स्ट्रा क्वेश्चन में है लेटर ऑन यूर अचीवर्स बैच एंड सब में a lot of that focus is on how to solve a problem and what i saw in cat is ki things were way more fundamental if you understood ki what is an area what is geometry what is trigonometry you were able to solve the question like there were more uh, fun, like questions testing your fundamentals than question uh, than testing your problem solving ability in cat but in ift because i know a lot of people want to get ift or zat Right, and uh, there was another one, uh, the uh, symbiosis or the snap. Right. Symbiosis, I did not give, but uh, a friend of mine who gave. Those, uh, uh, sorry, those examinations, they are more focused on problem solving ability. That you have to be able to solve difficult problems fast. So you have to that what I'm trying to say is, keep focus on both fundamentals and problem solving. And I think one builds on the other. You know, unless your concepts are clear, you cannot solve the difficult ones. Uh, you would be surprised. What people yeah. do is they learn how to solve a problem, right. and then they repeat it <laughs> when you get a similar question. They like, go, "Oh, I know the algorithm of how to solve it." <laughs> Instead of the as a Q, yeah, I know how to do it. So Q, yeah, उसको ध्यान दो. Cat पे ज़्यादा काम आएगा. कैसे किया उसको ध्यान दो. वो बाकी सब में काम. I think uh, uh, Sumit ने बात भी की है थोड़े important chapter की जैसे for example a topic like functions है, dogs है, dices है. हाँ, dogs है. These are simple questions which you get in CAT. जो students हैं. Numbers one is easy. Numbers two difficult है. Absolutely हाँ. जब ते commerce students who have joined us, uh, they normally afraid of these chapters like functions, laws, and dices and so on. And what uh, I think Sumit will attest to is that this chapter is question simple. Very simple. And once you have solved questions, two or three things are required to solve. Basically, we can ask how to solve a problem. There are three or four templates of a problem. Understand the template, you can go and solve. Correct. Uh, uh, let's move to an important area to get now. Read it. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, that's something which we have to focus regularly in the class, telling the students that you need to read the two crack cat. Chat is not JE that you clear the written exam and then you are into an IIT or in, into an institution. You also have to clear the stages like BAT and PIs and so on and so forth. Yes. Uh, what's your own take on this whole idea of reading? What do you used to do? What do you read, used to read? Okay, so so I want uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, sorry. I want it into two parts. First is in general. Second, did you do anything special for that? So uh, coming back, I mean, when you're reading, you have to read. Like, कुछ भी पढ़ो. मैं जब मेरे दो तीन young colleagues हैं, जो अभी मैं A B B join किए थे, and they were like, मैं क्या करूँ? तो मैंने कहा कि, see, lot of people they put pressure on you, a lot not pressure, they give you advice. You read this magazine, that magazine, and many times क्या होता है? If you are not very well versed in English, these magazines come out to be very boring. So you have to figure out what is your area of interest, and then you read, start reading with your area of interest. My area of interest was uh, cricket, then uh, tennis, say ice hockey, like more like sports and uh, space. So I would read a lot of space uh, uh, related stories. I mean, I mean stories. I mean articles, sports articles. Like I would chart them. I had because sports section of newspaper ka chart jata tha pura pura. So. You have to read a lot. I have read a lot of novels, fantasy novels. As an AD, you know, specific how to make money, how to be a good reader. Like these all will help you a lot. But to get into a habit of reading, you have to start from a place of entertainment. Like because if you are not able to read, like when you are starting something out, if and it feels like a word, you will lose interest. So see where your interest is, then read a lot in that. Especially for the first two months, read exclusively in that because words to words, the jo economist magazine mein honge, wo tumare kya kehte hai Game of Thrones ke novels mein honge. Like maybe except for some technical terms that will be there and not here, but you will not be you will get uh, used to English, right? First of all, you have to make yourself uh, comfortable with English, and to get comfortable with English, reading is not the only thing. I also listen to a lot of things, lot of podcasts. So a podcast follow. India में तो podcast scene धीरे-धीरे बढ़ रहा है, but वो US में, Europe का like आपको science में interest है, science के podcasts हैं. Politics में interest है, politics के podcasts हैं. आपको sports में interest है, sports के podcasts हैं. 
अगर आपको पॉडकास्ट में नहीं है तो यूट्यूब में गो टू यूट्यूब एंटर योर एरिया ऑफ इंटरेस्ट फाइंड ये कहते हैं आपके वीडियोस एंड देन लिसन टू देम लिसन टू देम अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट दे आर सेइंग रिवाइंड एंड री अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट दे आर ट्राइंग टू से कुछ वर्ड समझ में नहीं आता है राइट देम डाउन उसका मतलब समझो सो इट्स नॉट जस्ट रीड फर्स्ट गेट कंफर्टेबल विद इंग्लिश टॉक टू पीपल विद टॉक टू पीपल अराउंड यू इन इंग्लिश चाहे कितना भी खराब क्यों ना हो यार सब हम लोग मैं भी मैं सर हम लोग तो क्या कहते हैं अंग्रेजों के अलग तो है आज सम पर्ट है हमारी इंग्लिश भी एकदम बेकार थी तो कैसे हुआ बात कर कर के कर कर के कर कर के ही इंप्रूव हुआ राइट तो अपने दोस्तों से अपने पेरेंट्स से अपने कलीग से इंग्लिश में बात करो गलती करो मैं थोड़ा एग्जांपल आउट ऑफ कैट एंड आउट ऑफ प्रिपरेशन लूंगा मेरे मेरे ही एबीबी में मेरा जो प्रीवियस बॉस था हिज इंग्लिश वाज हॉरिबल एंड ही फाउंड की एंड वो अपने काम में बहुत अच्छा था प्रॉब्लम वन ऑफ लाइक समवन जिससे मैंने वर्क के बारे में बहुत सीखा काम में So he used to read a lot of books. He used to listen to a lot English man and try to speak. He used to speak to us in English to improve his English. And by the time he left our uh, ABB, his English was too good. In fact, he was interviewed from uh, by ABB USA for a position over there. His English had improved to that levels. So, जो भी है, as I said, motivation अंदर से आता है and ये कहते हैं गलती भी होती है. बट अभी जब हमको कैट क्रैक करना है तो करना है गलती होगी करेंगे कोई बात नहीं सीखेंगे आगे बढ़ेंगे तो गेट यूज टू इंग्लिश पहला स्टेप वन ये देन स्टेप टू इज वंस यू आर लाइक लाइक वन यू आर कंफर्टेबल विद इंग्लिश ओके वन थिंग आई टेल यू समवन टोल्ड मी दैट यू आर कंप्लीटली ओके विद डिफरेंट लैंग्वेज इज वेन यू कैन ड्रीम इन दैट लैंग्वेज If you dream in English, that means you are now completely comfortable with English. <laughs> so we are not trying to get there, but once you feel that you are now got a good command, that you are able to understand passages in class, you are able to solve the jumble uh, sentences. So now what you have to do? Then you definitely go into the financial newspapers, read that, go into science. Uh, This thing, read about science, even if you're not interested in that, because one passage will come from economics, one passage will come from science, one passage will come from anthropology, right? So we get a try to do such things, read to do. So that would now start preparing you for CAT, specific reading towards CAT. And again, I would say read newspapers, me read the political section and read the financial section. Because these two would now help you after not just CAT like even आप लोग कोई भी B school में आप interview के लिए जाओगे वहाँ पे आपको politics के बारे में पूछेंगे पूछेंगे आपको finance के बारे में पूछेंगे पूछेंगे so you need to know uh, with at least within the last one year what is happening what is happening politically and what is happening financially around you so you must read those uh, magazines which uh, time people recommend. But my only point was that you don't have to start with. You start with what makes you comfortable with uh, with that language. But do transition over to it. I think it raises a very valid point that you don't need to start with the difficult ones. You can, if you don't read, you can simply start with the uh, you know the story books with uh, you know children. Yeah. Story books for. Arey, right now everyone has Netflix or Amazon Prime. Take some time off. Watch English. Uh, okay, get the English TV shows. So get get comfortable with English. That's what I'm trying to say. Have your subtitles on. See what they are saying if, and read it. So that you are under, you are picking up the language. So uh, first, get comfortable with English. That is one. Right. I think I think he has provided you with a path where you can say how to do English. If there is a section where you have to master, how to do it? How to do it? Because English is one section which is actually a nemesis for a lot of people who are very good with quant, D, A, L, R. Who can do it? English section is not there. So I think he has provided you with the perfect path here of how to go about cracking this section. 
आई थिंक अगर आप फॉलो करेंगे जो भी सुमित ने आपको बताया है आई थिंक इंग्लिश वुड नॉट रिमेन अ डिफिकल्ट सेक्शन फॉर यू एंड सेकेंडली लाइक देखो मैंने क्या बोला कि देर आर टू पार्ट इन योर वी आर सी यू एव आर सी एन यूर वी एन सो यू नीड अ लॉर्ड ऑफ Uh, you need to put a lot of effort into English, especially for the R C. So even if you think that yeah, English is level but नहीं आ रहा, then you put a lot of effort into the V A section. Those ten questions, thirty marks are there for taking. I made a mistake. I did not concentrate on that as much as I should have. Don't repeat my mistake. So do four out of six uh, R C. और बाकी का टाइम अच्छे से पढ़ करके वो टेन थर्टी थर्टी में से ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी फाइव मार्क्स आने की कोशिश एंड आई थिंक फॉर ऑल द पीपल हुआ वॉचिंग सुमित इज प्रॉब्लली वन ऑफ द वेरी फ्यू पर्सन मेट हु इज इंटरेस्टेड इन अमेरिकन पॉलिटिक्स इट वेरी वेरी क्लियरली दैट आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन अमेरिकन पॉलिटिक्स एंड इज ऑल्सो वेरी वेल रेड अबाउट इट सो आई थिंक समथिंग विच यू नीड टू बी कॉम्प्लीमेंटेड अबाउट सुमित दैट ही नोज अबाउट इट ही वेल रेड अबाउट इट So I think that that interest develops over a period of time. It does not happen in a day, obviously. Oh, and funny story is that <coughs> one of my interviews, I was asked, "Ki, hey, uh, what do you think of Trump and what he's doing?" And I think I told them so much that they were like, "Okay, okay, bye, okay, go." Go. I hope it was not I am mad at him. No. Okay. With all the preparation that we have done, so let's try. Right? You have the D day. Nervous, excited. What was going in your mind? How did you prepare yourself? Because sometimes it happens that you are probably the best in class. You do very well in your mock test, but something happens in the D day, right? When you're there in the class, how did you prepare mentally for? I think uh, this is not specific to CAT. and this is something that you develop over time it is something i when i uh, have i've developed over say when i was studying engineering and then we would have exams on the exam day i had i knew that i have to be as calm as possible no matter what how much i have prepared if i study 50% 50% 40% 40% 100% 100% you have to stay calm pad liya jitna pad liya if you are very lucky usme se aayega and then You do great. If you're unlucky, then you're unlucky. Nothing you could have done. I mean, with Anna Hindi, me. Ab pasta hai kya ho? Jab chidiya chup gaye. Okay. So there is nothing new you can do on the exam day that is suddenly going to raise you two three levels higher. It is then it's on luck on and on whatever you're prepared. So now on the exam day, it is all about maximizing what you have prepared. And you can only maximize what you have prepared is when you are calm. When when you are thinking clearly, so you have so you have uh, you are not distracted one way or the other. So uh, for me, this something I've always done is that if next day is my examination, eight baje the eight o'clock the previous day, I put my books down, I've closed my listing. That now jo ho gaya ho gaya. So uh, so for this cat nineteen, what it was eight o'clock ko I stopped studying, went out for a drive. गया दोस्तों के साथ थोड़ा मस्ती किया डिड नॉट थिंक आउट नॉट थिंक अबाउट कि कल क्या है आई वेंट अबाउट कि हां हैड सम चिल्ड गोइंग टू स्लीप एट अराउंड 11:00 वोक अप एट 5:36 ओके बिकॉज़ एट दैट टाइम इट हैड बिकम दैट एवरी डे माय वेकिंग अप टाइम वाज 5:00 सो इट वाज दैट वाज अ न्यू थिंग सो आई वोक अप एट 5:00 5:30 देन व्हाट व्हाट आई डन वाज आई हैड प्रिपेयर्ड अ चीट शीट ऑफ ऑल द फार्मूला दैट आर देयर सो I went. I picked up a friend of mine who was giving exam with me. We went to the institute uh, half an hour before our entry time. We opened the formula, and once I revised the formula to get back uh, to get my mind back into the problem solving uh, state, that it cannot be you know just going in empty minded completely. So understanding what the formula is, why the formula. Is, so I spent about half an hour just on the formula that I had written. That this is what I know. Nothing new. Not going to study new rules of permutation and combination. Not going to study any new rules of probability. Which two were my weakest sections? I was like, "Ye weak hai, aa gaya to chhod de. Koi wo nahi. Baaki sab hai, acha hai, strong hai. So which of the the my strong points? I concentrated on that. Read all the formula. Got my mind set back on the track. Went in, relaxed, 
गेट माई एग्जाम इधर उधर नहीं देखो क्या कर रहे लोग क्या नहीं कर रहे लोग बिकॉज समटाइम्स गाइज आर सो इन टू इट यू लाइक ओ माई गॉड यू सॉल्विंग इट एंड मे बी द गाइज नॉट एबल टू सॉल्व एनी थिंग Right, you know, and then you just get a very word no reason. Like you must have seen a lot. He even in your examinations in school and colleges, there's one guy taking sheets after right. sheets, sheets after sheets, and the guy only gets forty out of hundred. Right. Well, you have finished it on the main sheet and got an eighty. And you get more nervous by looking at the number of supplements. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So think about you. Think about your this thing. In a way, that is good. That your cubicles, so you don't easily get distracted. Right. So just keep a clear mind. Everybody has their own. Uh, Way of so, so I don't try to preach my way of uh, giving exam. Mm-hmm. I had a friend of mine who gave exams after staying awake all night. He was like, if I sleep, I get nervous. I need to stay all night and study all night. Only then I have to be focused enough to study. And he also did well. He was also ninth pointer in my college. So everybody has their own style of studying, own style of listening. So don't try to do anything new. Do what you're comfortable with, and uh, you will do well. Just. Think about what you have prepared, not what you have not prepared. Correct. And I think uh, we also need to understand this fact that if your CAT is a six-month, ten-month kind of a preparation game, it's not that you suddenly decide one day before that I need to study. So there is a clear differentiation between how you prepare for a university exam and how you prepare for the CAT exam. So if you have studied for ten months, it does not matter. Okay. Right? So I think that preparation has to take place over a period of time, and then. You know, just be level-headed, just be cool at it. I think that it would work better. Correct. Like rather than getting nervous. Yeah, if you get uh, overwhelmed, then you will not get anything done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So you probably should should write. Well, there are a lot of pressures also who are listening to you, and yes, yes. they don't think to write right, so right. much. It's only at the time of examination that they write. Mm-hmm. So, so I think I think you should get comfortable with writing as well, because if you have twenty minutes, you have to focus on your, your thoughts, mm-hmm. and uh, it's writing is not the difficult part. The difficult part is organizing your thoughts before writing. Right. Like you, if you know words, you can put words on paper. It's about which word should come where. You know, so yeah, you should probably like how to organize your thoughts and all that stuff. That would only come by practice. That cannot come just by uh, so by practice of writing and also practice of reading. But how other people are organizing their thoughts. So you should probably write something every day. Uh, how did time Nasik help you so much? Any both the cat stage, that's the writing part, as well as the GDP and the lat part. I can I can sort of tell that if I didn't join time, I probably would not crack cat or get into it. <clears throat> I mean, other than the fact that yeah, their uh, resources are there. the resources are amazing, the books are amazing. Like in fact, cousin of mine, she asked, uh, "What should I do?" I cannot uh, because it's uh, because of quarantine. I'm unable to join uh, time, so I told her to get the books. So she bought the books online, and she also bought the in cat. Uh, I will book the mock cat series from them. So, other than that, time gave me a structure like, okay, this, now these are the classes. This is what I'll be studying. So I was able to prepare some more of a timetable based on what I'm learning. So there was stu- there was a daily structure, a weekly structure, a monthly structure, which which I kind of need in order to uh, in order to do well. And uh, yeah, the, the the books are amazing. The teachers are extremely approachable. They are well versed in their topics. You can anytime go; they'll help you out. Some if if something they are unable to help you out at the time, they would invest some time and come back to you the next time you go to them or they'll call you up. So feel free. This is a you. I mean, obviously you have paid. So now this is your this is your resource. You have to mine this resource. So beja kaw teacher loka. English needs some much more. Go to your English teacher. Go sit with her, tell or him or tell him her that teach me how to do it, how to do it. Come here on the weekends. Sit here, study. If you are unable to understand how to study, focus on the class. See, one thing you will see is that class में जो वो होते हैं questions जो होते हैं they are much easier than the ones that are there in the book. And also I would say they are somewhat easier than what's there in the Uh, in the cat so doing just the questions that are done in the uh, class that does not even help you with the aim cat because mera is yahi ho pehle do aim cat mein i was like oh questions ye kar rahe the yahan pe ye kya ho gaya correct right so don't get uh, this thing uh, comfortable with yeah i am going to solve what is happening in the class that is only to brush up your fundamentals correct right so go back home open your book at least solve every other alternate question Do the aim cats like this is a great resource that you guys have, and I'm telling you like without uh, without time if you're at like around 80 85 percentile with time you can definitely jump to 95 to 97. And I think uh, one thing which Sumit has repeatedly pointed out to you is uses of aim cats. Yeah, I think mean, that's something which we also point out to all our students in the class that please utilize aim cat. They are for your benefit only. If you don't utilize aim cat, it will be very very difficult to you know. Like the exam, Correct. just on the basis of what you have learned in the class. Oh, uh, Sumit, when we are also you are appear for a number of interviews as well. Other, there are some frequently asked questions. Tell me something about yourself, so on and so forth. Any different question that you remember that you would like to recount and say, "Ye expect nahi kiya tha. Ye to kuch alag hi hai." Me saath nahi hote, but happened to a guy before me in the same interview panel. Okay, so the. I I don't know the answer to this. So they said that uh, you are in a foreign country, and there is a brown-looking person in front of you. How would you? And they are not wearing any uh, ornaments, not having a bindi or any of that sort. They are in plain clothes. How, without talking to the person, how would you figure out that he is from India? And I didn't. <laughs> I am glad I was not asked that question. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and actually, what happens is like okay. So now, now I come to PI. PI would vary from institute to institute a lot. 
see, I am Bangalore. They care a lot more about your work experience. So about my 30 minutes interview, 20, 50 to 20 minutes was given to my work experience. And then they asked me about problems that are going on in India. How would you solve it? And so being from an engineering background, I tried to talk about engineering jobs and things like that. So that was I am Bangalore interview. I am Lucknow. OK, now I am Lucknow interview uh, was completely different. It was online interview, not face to face. And my interview was at 6 o'clock in the evening. And my interview was the interviewer. He was sitting on a table with his leg up, eating chana. And he's asking me, take a paper and explain to me how to geometrically prove the Pythagoras theorem. And I'm like, I don't even know if he wants the answer or not. <laughs> we are done with the evening side. Right? So, so there the focus was a lot more towards mathematics for some reason. But I am Shillong was completely on my academics. They talked to me from uh, my mechanical engineering three or four subjects. Like 25 minutes, it only asked me about that. Right. right? And uh, then my uh, I am CAP interviews. CAP is basically all your new IMs together. They they hold an uh, interview together. Like uh, they hold a single interview for every every uh, So then they asked me a lot about Nasik. Right, tell us about Nasik, population of Nasik, what is uh, famous about Nasik, no, uh, how many, who is your MLA, who is your MP, they asked a lot in that sense. Then SPJN, SPJN was two tier interview, first interview is more technical about, somewhat about colleges, some more, more about like work experience. And then second was just abstract, what, what are the qualities you look for in your best friend, how, how would you think that those qualities go? In your future wife, you know, like uh, what? What do you think about the anti-CA protests? Not not the protesters, but these film stars coming and protesting over there. Right. Uh, okay, do you do you like smoking? So if someone said no, so he said okay. So if you are now hired, if now ITC hires you, and they say now you have to head our cigarette department, how are you going to sell cigarettes if you don't if you don't like smoking? So that was very abstract and like a next level thinking of this thing. So. Again, if you are well read, you talk to people, you watch videos about everything. I'm telling you, like it's not just about reading. Watch, spend time on YouTube. YouTube is great. I spend a lot of time on YouTube. Uh, and then read about. I mean, watch about what is happening around the world. Listen to TED Talks. TED Talks is something that you can listen to even while you are uh, preparing about English. TED Talks are talks. Many of you would know about TED Talks. For people who don't know, TED Talks are talks. Where someone uh, from some industry, he comes and uh, he or she comes and gives a brief uh, description about what they do, how it pertains to your life. It can be psychological, it can be technical, it can be anything. But more you watch, the more you learn about the world around you, and that would help you a lot when you uh, go for your PIs, when even uh, help you understand more about English. I think what he's pointing out is that you need to have a wider perspective about everything. It's not just yeah about what you like you also have to read what you don't they don't like probably or you find boring yeah you find boring right because you never know what kind of uh, questions are going to come forth in front of you and he's also pointed out the lot of answers fully moving on towards the technical side of it. yeah bi uh bi has become the most important focal point in a lot of uh, institutes right. gds are now dying green you know, only there for one or two of the only for one of my uh, uh interviews and if Corona goes on, and even next year, if you are unable to have a group meet, uh, uh, group meeting, and most of the selection process online, you would again have very, very, very less GDs. Correct. So um, you focus a lot on PI, talk to people in English. I'm telling you, like as much as mathematics and everything is there, unfortunately, in our country and more around the world, the better you are in English, the more you are able to. Uh, what are you able to get ahead in your life? I mean, it's a sad reality. So even if you are unable to uh, do that great in CAC, whatever amount of time you are spending on English will only help you grow in your life. So uh, that that is something I would check. Any major mistakes which you made in the interview, Sumit, that you want to, that you remember, recollect, and you feel after you in the interview, you not Yeah, that's there for almost every interview. Mm -hmm. And some of those, 
institutes even after making a mistake i was selected in some i was not right. so i don't know how badly things affected right. right so like you will always make a mistake but a lot about is how you uh, come back from it say for example like corona was just happening i just started doing my and bangalore interview and i read up a lot on on corona virus <clears throat> and especially on the impact of corona virus on the economy and so the final question they asked me was what is the latest economic news that you can talk to us about and instead of talking about corona virus i talked about the vodafone sr uh, asia problems i was having and after going out of the interview i was like man everyone was talking about vodafone sir right this is something that i knew and i knew i, I should know and uh, i don't know why i did not talk about corona virus at that time and i literally was feeling like killing myself at that time right but you know that day took me then anyway right. right okay and then one place i would say is that i was not selected well, okay so one of my uh, uh this thing interest is in space exploration you know space exploration is a vast vast field so interest added in space exploration so the interviewer in front of me he started asking me about which is the space agency of japan of europe and that was not my area of interest my area of interest was more into black holes and then wormholes and theory of relativity and you know big further deep concepts so i i so he thought that okay what is hell is this guy talking about so after he asked me five or six questions and he's like okay so then what do you understand from space exploration and he said he doesn't even know like what is japan space agency what is he talking about Then I told him that this is what I, I understand. Like I'm not interested in our solar system, but more towards you know like hydrogen collider and things like that. So I don't know how he took up, how he took it, but I I was not selected. It could be that they thought that it's my area of interest. I should know everything about my area of interest, right? So it could have been uh, something that put me down. Another concern which comes in the mind of students from it is that a lot of those people who are taking a break for cap. So do gap in academics matter? Let's say because there are a lot of engineers also who prepare for IIT, so they have a one year or a two year gap. Where, you know they are preparing for the JEE. Does it matter? I have more than a two year gap between say my twelfth and my Manipal education, and that did not matter. It's see in the end it's all about selling yourself. If you can sell yourself well, then it does not matter whatever you did. Okay, but one thing I would say, he was talking about uh, something I would say is that. when i went to the interviews right almost everyone around me had some work experience everyone around me had scored high in cat what really separates you from the other is what other things you have done other than work and cat right like uh, something that was taught told us later and i wish i was told to us before is that you should have gone on and organized some events say a blood donation camp organize a blood donation camp. right you know like uh, Done some other organization, like uh, join some NGO, you know, spend some time in an NGO. And thing is that you can do that. A friend of mine, she actually runs an NGO while she, while she's working in ABB. And uh, I think that I could have actually gone ahead and I have done some of the projects. And that would come more in my in my uh, in my resume, which I put forth further. So think about what else you can do to contribute to things around you. Other than just studying for CAT and this uh, thing, see, thing is that not everyone is going to get into IIMs. Like even for me, I'm saying I feel like I was lucky to get into an IIM because number of seats are very low. You could be the most brilliant person, and still they, some, you might have a bad day, you might have done a bad interview goes wrong, and then you don't get selected. Like sometimes the interviewer is bored. He doesn't want. Uh, he already has. Yeah, as ten tha, ten se two ko aaj ke mein select kar diya. Jitne aayenge, ab jo hai dekha jaye. Right, so thing is that okay, you may not get in, but there's some other colleges. So a lot of colleges look, they don't look at a person. He, क्या ये आदमी आकर के मेरे कॉलेज में एकेडमिकली आग लगा रहे हैं. What they are looking for is that once he gets placed into the company, would my college look good in future in that company? Right. So companies also they look for diversity of thought. Right. They no longer care that your 10 GPA tha, ki 8 GPA tha, ki 7 GPA tha. They want new ideas because our work environment in India has somewhat become stale. 
and it's something i was even told in my work that we are taking new people we are taking because we expect them to be dynamic we expect them to be doing more than what is just asked of them you have to be able to think outside the box right so and you can thinking outside the box is not something that people who are geniuses can do. thinking outside the box is something what people who have experienced the world can do so you can experience the world only when you get out of your house to get out of the house take up new challenges do new things and yeah you would see that your personality itself grows to to such a level that people when they talk to you they're like yeah i want this guy to be in my college or in my office very well said so much i think there is a lot of there is need for a lot of participation in curricular as well as extra curricular yeah. activities focus on extra curricular activities a lot focus on it. don't give up on it. right there need to be a conscious effort from your side ki mujhe participate karna hai or yeah. and not only in terms of building your profile it also gives you a lot of confidence how to talk to people to meet new people you know so i think there are a lot of other benefits as well other than rather than just coming it on your resume yes they have their benefits and in fact institute like spchn are a lot of you know calls to be based on their profile rather than only their cat score so there's a lot yeah. of institute which is moving towards more and more of profile based calls rather than only cat based calls correct right? correct and there's even go as well management even they have profile based calls right so if your profile is great and you have that minimum percentile which they want they just want 75 percentile if you are across that profile is good they take you they don't care then that you scored 98 or 99 or not as long as you have uh, pass your sections how do we see so much 10 years on what are your future goals 10 years down the line it's very hard because Five i years. truly i truly believe in that mantra that man proposes god disposes correct <laughs> five years ago so what, said, are, so what are you proposing right now <laughs> that not not dispose it later on <laughs> so my uh, this thing is to actually do my uh, finish my mba right. and then get into a uh, get into a good firm my two focus areas are either consulting or finance right. if i get into either of them i would be extremely happy and then work and grow and uh, try to you know try to get to a level where i'm able to uh, make some decisions for the company able to decide the vision or vision the company should be taking moving forward and in fact honestly i also want to be a good role model to the people around me that when they look at me they like yeah i want to be more like this guy i want to work like this guy uh, so that that's what i want like down the line when i am okay and i mean all humility has not highlighted and something which i would like to highlight he also wants to start his own school uh, yeah, at some age uh, at yeah. some point of time Eventually, i want to open my own school yes. right so i think i think that's something that's a food for thought uh Uh, let's quickly look at the questions, Sumit. There are some questions which are pouring in. So let's see what all questions do we have. Uh, Devyani has asked, "Could you brief give a brief as to how your interview was?" I think that's that's something Sumit which is already answered. In fact, quite a few questions. I would just uh, give say two, two or three. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you see, thing is that if you have had some work experience. then they will ask you more more from the work experience especially people, especially interviewers who are uh, who are serious about it if they are not serious about it they can do any abstract stuff but if you are a fresher then they can ask you anything from your uh, any from anything second year first year does not matter like i am shilam i was asked from a course that they thought i should have taken like there is something called power plant and engineering and i did not take that course i took automobile automobile leasing as an elective but they asked me from power plant as you say but i was somewhat lucky that during my work experience i had to work with power plants that i knew what he was talking about and i was able to answer it. so if if you are a fresher or have had very little work experience they will grill you on your uh, on your studies if you had work experience more of it would be your work experience uh, but they would definitely be current affairs financially and or politics right Uh, Adit is asking, MBA is easy or not? That's a difficult. That's a very subjective question, Adit. I believe you want to ask whether CAT is easy or not because MBA so much is yet to experience MBA. Uh, but then definitely, I see it's all about. He has already highlighted that you need to be focused. If you are focused and you have decided that you want to go ahead with it, I think it should not be a problem. There are so many people who crack it, so I think it should not be a problem for you as well. Uh, Omkar asks. As I'm graduating in 2020, is it good that I should look at 2020 or should I go for job? Yeah, I think this was highlighted earlier. Uh, they go, if you go, 
एक्सपीरियंस में देना दे दो अगर कुछ हो गया तो हो गया अच्छी बात है बट आई वुड सजेस्ट दैट माय पर्सनल थिंग वुड बी लाइक फोकस मोर ऑन जॉब बिकॉज दे वुड वर्क एक्सपीरियंस मैटर्स अलॉट कि कैट स्कोर इज ऑनली पार्ट ऑफ योर ओवरऑल प्रोफाइल स्कोर एंड समटाइम्स योर जॉब एक्सपीरियंस डिपेंडिंग ऑन हाउ मेनी मंथ्स यू हैड फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम कैलकटा एंड आई एम लखनऊ they if you have had 30 months of work experience that they consider to be 10% of your profile score right so uh, that is something that i got benefit from so i would suggest that go into the work and secondly i would say is that one of the biggest motivating factors for me why i was doing an mba is because how stuck i felt at work so more so if i had not worked i would not have realized that how important doing an mba would be for me so and so you have to go understand what a work environment is and even if you do an mba and go in as a fresher you would feel that you uh, this i'm talking about people who have already done an mba i've talked to them they would also say that if you know how an office system works it is very different from how you what you have done academically so you need to understand how work happens before you are able to go because as an mba you would be tasked to influence how that work happens So to so to influence how the work happens, you need to understand how the work happens. So you would be better positioned if you have at least one or two years of experience. Uh, I would also like to add to this question uh, that uh, see, when we are looking at work experience, we are also looking at the kind of work experience. So we had a very different kind of work experience. He was associated with a very reputed company, right? So the kind of value which he was bringing to the table was also something which was very very different from if you join a normal organization just for the sake of having work experience, right? So I think uh, it's also important that you uh, look at work experience in terms of learning whether you are learning anything out of it, and if yes, then I think so much so much saying is correct. But then uh, you have to take a balanced view on this in terms of what is the learning and whether you can justify the time which you are giving to that. No, no, see, one thing I think that might get lost in a transition or whatever. Right. See, the job you are doing does not matter. Whichever job you are doing, it does not matter during the interview time. Right. Whether you are in an MNC or whether you are in a local company or even if you work sales for a very small thing. Right. What they look for is what did you understand from your job. Right. What did you understand about the company, about the job, about the market. So, I don't. Not just focusing on what you're doing. Focus on what is happening around you. Right. How the how the work environment is working. Right. And so it does not matter like which job you're doing. So don't think that yeah, I need to be in an MNC or something to get recognized. Are there people who get selected who work for startups? No name startups. Right. But they understand how startup market works. Right. So understand how your market is going. That is important. Right. uh aditya another question from aditya which is best specialization in mba or which has more scope i don't think so there is uh, i think there is any best specialization in mba it all depends upon your own interest yeah, actually there are a few things that are coming up right now i am lucknow has a uh, thing called sustainability management right i am bangalore has something called uh, data analytics the right. data analytics management all right okay now these are courses that have been there just for two or three years so today they seem like they don't even you have to apply for them uh, separately and people say that it's better to go to lower iim so even spj than taking up these like if you get 95 percentile you can go for these two right okay. but if you look at the job market outside of india say europe us the two of the hottest commodities are sustainability management and data analytics because that is what those countries are doing right so you don't know 10 years down the line these two might become the most important subjects in mba around us so to say which is best is not feasible and honestly like once you go in you have to understand where your interests lie and then how you want to go uh devyani asks how much did you score in your first 3 4 mcat i think that's a question which we should skip i think that would be difficult to answer in terms of uh, okay. individual score individual score is difficult yeah. but i know that my uh, listing was between 115 to 140 Okay. Uh, let me let me uh, take this up a little. There's something I wanted to share with you guys. Yeah. Try to score 140 in your mock aim catch. Like it will be very hard. It's not just very hard. It will be extremely hard. Not many people can do it because you have to score more than 180 in your catch if you want to get into uh, your the top six IMs. 
like because anything lower if, and if you're an engineering engineer and a male you won't even get called so i'm not saying this to demotivate you i'm saying this that it is a realistic target the target is basically 60 marks each in uh, barc dilr and quant that is how i approached it i approached that i have to get 60 marks each that means i have to uh, do 20 questions i have to solve 20 right questions minimum in each subject so 180 was my target and i got 179 point something after their uh, uh, analysis or whatever so i was able to meet my target but having met my target i think that if i had a somewhat better direction at the starting and somewhat better like if i if i redo it now every aim card i would try to score 140 and i would uh, try to get 200 in the cat because it is achievable by rigorous practice it is achievable it is nothing uh, not not achievable just like to add to what Sumitra said, but please remember it's going to happen over a period of time. It's not going to happen in a day because I think. No, no I'm saying trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to achieve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I probably scored more than 140 like thrice. Right. Right. But the thing is that I was not focused on scoring at that time. Like, I'm, see, I know I told you, aim cuts not for marks and everything. But after, like, say, uh, after you've done, say, 10, 10 aim cuts, now aim cut would become like, yeah, your. Uh, uh, that how you're gonna approach CAT, right? Because you learn how to approach CAT. Right. So you have to somewhat score somewhat in aim cards also to be able to have confidence enough to score in cards. Absolutely. So you need to at least have a goal while you're doing aim cards. Right. Whether you are able to achieve a goal, achieve that goal or not is immaterial. That's what that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And if you don't score, doesn't matter. Because then you do the analysis and see how why you don't That's important to highlight to me because what also happens is a lot of these students you said then you tell them a target of 140 they get 70 and then they get demotivated right yeah. so i think it's important to clarify this uh, that uh, he's what he is trying to say is that that should be a target uh, yes. it's not going to happen in every aim cat no. it's not going to happen in the first aim cat or the second aim cat a lot of practice that is going to come and out. some aim cats are more different than the other aim cats right. so there were times when i scored 140 and next aim cat i went to 106 okay. for no fault of mine right right so uh, so these things are not in your control. But what I was trying to say is, okay, I should actually not talk about marks. What I should try to say is, if try to solve 20 questions each mm-hmm. in English, DILR, and uh, what? I was talking more in marks because when you say in marks, that's that's what your marks would come out to. Okay. Right? What my point was, to try to solve 20 questions in each uh, in each uh, section. Okay. Uh, Divyani, again. Uh, how did you divide your time to study, for instance, one hour in reading? It's any any comments on this? How your own division of time? Sumit? Because, but please understand that Sumit was working. So he had very limited time to practice. For all those people who are freshers, who are not working, you might have more amount of time. So you need to work in proportion. Sumit, any, any comments on this? Uh, reading was something that was very inherent to me. I liked reading. That was part of my uh, life. Right. Even uh, while, while I was working, if I had some off time, I would open my browser. And open like look at what the news is, spend 10, 15 minutes. Like because even if you're in the office for say from nine to six, you're not working all those eight hours. Right. You're probably working for five to six hours. So you have about two, three hours. Right. So my reading time was basically what used to happen in my work. Right. I used to read a lot. Right. And then I talked about podcasts. So I listened to a lot of podcasts, even when I used to go for if I'm driving to school, I will not drive. So if I'm I'm like going somewhere, walking somewhere, going for a grocery. And at, at that time, I was also uh, exercising a lot. So when I'm doing my exercises, so when I when I have time for myself, I'm listening to something, right. either watching uh, or watching something. Like so, my reading, my English time used to be my free time, right. and my study time used to be uh, quant or or logical reasoning. Okay. Right. Uh, let's move to Varun. Uh, how many percentage percentage did you get in that? Aditya, we have already put that report in the very beginning. Nine nine point seven percentile is what. Sumit has got. Uh, then, does the quality of your work experience matter in the interviews, or is just the amount of work experience? He's already answered that in the very beginning. The kind of learning which you have got, Varun, is what is more important. So you need to be more open about new ideas, interact, and um, uh, understand what the company is in, the kind of work experience which you have, and that the quality is also extremely important. No, see what happens is that you have to understand what is going around you. Right. Right, so one of the questions they ask is, what do you do as your thing? So I said tendering is one of the things that I do. Now tendering is not something I used to do, but my uh, sales guy used to do. Mm-hmm. But I knew what he did. Yeah. So in the interview, I haven't told, yeah, this is what we do. There's a tender that I get, there's a points that I do. 
I said, yeah, this is also involved in medicine. They are not going to come back and check whether I did personally did any tendering or not. Right. So you can, as I said, you have to sell yourself. Right. So the more you understand about what is happening around you, the better you'll be able to sell yourself. Yeah. Uh, Bhakti, there are many sources to read and listen in English, but the challenge is with speaking, how to practice. Okay. Uh, talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to your teachers, come here. You, you are in time, no? come here, there are English teachers, talk to them. Like if you have no one else who you think are proficient enough in English to help you better your English, come here, talk to these people. Say, say, spend two hours over here. I am sure they will be extremely eager to... Uh, see, the thing is that you have to understand one thing. Time is a teaching institute. See, they grow if you grow. So they also want to invest in you. If you do well, their reputation increases, their enrollment increases. So they have an inherent, uh, in, inherent. Uh, uh, I mean, they want you to succeed. Basically, their uh, success is your success. So the more time you spend here, the happy they will be because the better you will do, and the better they can then advertise on you. Bhakti <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, had another question: How many hours do you used to sleep? Minimum and maximum hours each day. I sleep six hours a day. Uh, that would not, I do not uh, compromise. compromise on that because if you don't sleep well, you are never focused enough for anything. Absolutely. Uh, Prajot, sir, please tell us about your revision strategy. Any revision strategies to me that you follow? Yeah, my revision strategy, I told you know, the last two months was basically I have to, every two days, I have to finish one uh, course. So till, till uh, I had finished all my, uh, I studied everything once. Uh, by mid September, right? And then uh, there's a lot of revision that happens even here. You have your achievers badge A B. You you're given extra problems. Then you have uh, time. You have, you have a lot of questions online. So basically, depending on how you are feeling, you can do what you want. But basically, I would say that you you should attempt every question at least twice. Right. So once when you're doing the first time, and second when you're doing it the second time, right. obviously by revision. Uh, Sejal and Ankita have almost similar kind of questions. Time span of five months enough to crack that soon? Sorry, is time span? Yes, it is enough to. It, uh, it, it all, it's all about how much time you're giving to it. Mm -hmm. So if you're, I was not able to give, uh, initially, see, when I started learning, uh, when I started time, at that time, uh, I had not, uh, I was trying to balance my work also. I mean, not balance, I was trying to try to balance my work also and here also. Right. So the, more I would focus on my work, the less I would be able to focus over here. So I would say that my real preparation only started from April. So uh, yeah, five, five months is enough. Will say karo ge, five months is enough. Right. So Ankita Sejin, I hope your query is answered. Five months is more than sufficient. Costo uh, has a question: Which books to refer for content DILR other than time material? Uh, I don't think it's required. I, I, I personally did not. Uh, we would take up any other book. Mm -hmm. But as I, as I told, uh, I don't know if you heard, the guy who scored 100% there, he said that there are some Facebook groups out there. If, if, if you just Google around for groups, there are a lot of groups uh, where on forums where they give you questions which are which are just have not been able to solve. Mm -hmm. So you can do further practice from there. Right. Uh, Rohit has a question, and it's an interesting question. Does five years high experience matter? Sorry, five years high experience. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, it, I, I would say that if you have had five years of experience, then you probably are better off going for an XMBA because that is what even uh, people from like uh, interviews also they will ask you that why you're going for a two year MBA and not an ex executive MBA. Mm -hmm. Because now you're in a position to even after five years experience, you're in a position to become a manager even in your own firm. Right. So why would you want to give up a managerial position to go somewhere down the line after two years of studies? So if you're doing an XMBA, you, XMBA is a one-year course. You'll be able to uh, enhance on your experience and then get into a firm and uh, do well over there. And to your point, but I think having a lot of experience is also kind of detrimental as they cut off some marks from your profile because you're no longer a clean slate where they can teach you new things. Right now, they think that you are now set in your ways. Yeah. Like to give you a small example, so uh, the driving in India is a left-hand drive, right. and driving in uh, UAE is a right-hand drive. Right. 
So when my parents, when we come, he went from here to there. The first thing my father's uh, driving instructor told him is to forget everything that you have learned in India, right. because if you don't forget it, I cannot teach you anything new. Yeah. So and I think that also applies over here. By now five years, you are now set in your ways. I mean, how to work and how not to work. And uh, I don't know if you, and thing is that anyone can. I do believe that anyone can do anything. So if you think that is the best thing, you should pursue. Then you should pursue. But logical choice, in my opinion, would be to go for an exit. Uh, Varun has an interesting question. I think it it would be relevant for a lot of people who are watching us. What was your strategy for preparing DI last year? Last is a difficult section in that, you know, and there are no fixed methods like one. So how how would you prepare for a DI in this section? I think DILR. I I was able to learn more about DILR from doing aim caps than anything else, because the questions are done in class, and even a lot of questions that are in the book. They are not how the questions come in your cap, but many times the questions that that are in your aim caps are close to what comes in your cap. Yeah. So it was not just about trying to get an answer, but understanding about why I am going. Through this, right. you know why, why? How? See, DILR is more about a thinking process than a solving process. The solving process comes into point. Right. So you have to be able to think correct. You know, in able uh, to be able to solve your DILR. Right. So even the mock cats that I missed, or uh, so I did uh, even and sorry. And sometimes what happens is that just because you solved a DILR question once, you go back to it a week later. It seems like a new question altogether because you have forgotten your thinking process of that time. So I used to just I have done all the mock cat questions many times instead of doing the textbook questions many times. I felt that was better uh, strategy at least for me than uh, just grinding through the book. Right. So I think he what he is also implying is that focus more again more and more on the pain cat kind of question which coming in cat. I think you would be able to learn yeah, and also try to understand why you are doing something, not what you are. Like why is more important in cat? Right. How is more important in other uh, questions? Right. Other reasons. Uh, uh, number of questions. Santosh, Pankaja uh, are talking about work experience. Uh, so I think uh, uh, he has answered these questions on work experience uh, that you can get into older IIMs without jobs. Santosh is asking. Yes, but they have to score way too high. Right. Way too high for that. Correct. And. And, uh, you want to put that pressure on yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think, uh, see, if you do not have a work experience, you cannot build in five months or six months period of time. It takes over a period of time. So appear for CAT, as he has very rightly pointed out, if you get through it, good enough. If you are not able to, then try to work and get work experience and then apply for CAT in the next year. So definitely, is you can get through it. In fact, a lot of times are now also looking at freshers. Getting pressures into their organize into their institution. So I think it's not a compulsion that you need to have a work experience before applying to an IIM because if that would have been the case, they wouldn't have allowed you to appear for CAT yeah. in the first place. A lot of pressures come for the interviews, right? Right. Till the interview process, a lot of pressures are taken. So right. thing is, then you have you have to be able to distinguish yourself. Absolutely. So absolutely. if you if you think you are able to distinguish yourself over someone who has a work experience, then yeah, sure. sure. And that's something which is already pointed out in the big, uh, in between as well that you need to build your profile. If you have built your profile through extracurricular and co-curricular activities, then yes, definitely you can compete with people who are coming with some kind of a work experience. Sir. Important question, Sumit, uh, and I think that would be there for a lot of engineering background students. How you justified your shift from engineering background to engineering? Okay, that's a favorite cat question, interview question, engineering MBA. So I think that uh, I worked on it for two or three different templates for me, right. depending on which institution I was going for. Template number one, which was a very easy answer for me, was uh, I was in the marketing department already. So I talked about how I'm already in a marketing department, and from a very and what I sell is a very niche product. So in order to grow in in the marketing field, I need to come out of a specific product and get into get more education. So I said that yeah, even though I I may or may not go for marketing, I told them that I, if I come into an institute, I would love to learn more about marketing because what I know is just somewhat from work experience, and that that too very little. So that was something that I was able to say. And secondly, you can basically say you can be a little honest and say that yeah, you feel that 
the work that you're doing, you're not really contributing very well to the area around you. And you feel like after doing an MBA, you'll be able to contribute better to your country, to your surroundings, to your family itself, you know, and something of that sort. Another thing you can say is that engineering, you did engineering because, I mean, no, I think that's that the very bad idea. So these are two things that I think about. Okay, and, and a third thing that was, uh, the third thing template was that I actually even sent this into an interview in my MDI in Gurgaon interview, and I got selected. And it, what I told him was that I had two different managers. One manager had an MBA, and the other had, manager did not have an MBA. And the approach of the manager with MBA was miles better than the one without the MBA in terms of understanding the uh, organization, in terms of motivating his people, in terms of assigning us tasks, in terms of, uh, you know, and, and I think this might be best suited for a, for a person who was not in marketing department, who was a cheat, who can cheat like I cheated, right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yeah, so, and I said that, the, and the other manager, he was very, he was too narrow-minded about the goals, about uh, this organization, or about people around us. He was very weak at identifying strengths and weaknesses of people, and I think that, <clears throat> so that inspired me that yeah, I, I need to be more like that manager who had done the MBA, and uh, that is what motivated me to get an MBA and I'm here. So that that is something I had used in MBA, and I think they like that answer. I think uh, Rohit, your question has been answered, and I think a lot of engineering background students who are watching us, uh, your questions have got answered as far as engineering background to MBA transition is concerned. Uh, did you? So Santosh, has, did you do you score 99 percentile in first attempt? Yes, I think he scored 99 percentile in the first attempt. Uh, Bhakti has a question. I am a 2020 graduate. I want to go for a job, but unable to find. If I go for various internships instead, would that matter? Some if if, if they uh, if, if if they give you uh, this thing, uh, work certificate, it could matter. But it, it all depends. It depends upon them. Okay. And what they are ready to uh, accept or what they are not ready to accept. Okay, but at least if she's not able to find a job. No, no, no. no but, yeah. So, but thing is that since all, any internship that is after your graduation, that would count. Mm -hmm. But don't depend upon any internship that you have done during your college time. Right. That would not count, not even a single month. Right, right. So, yeah, that would definitely help. But, may, but they should give you that certificate that you have worked here as an unpaid intern or whatever, and this was your like, role, or, role or something. Uh, Yamini has a question for cat preparation. In spite of self motivation, I am unable to complete my daily goals. I am worried about that. What should I do? Uh, I also was not able to complete my daily goals, at least not uh, uh, so early on. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that I knew that I need to study. And so then, so I relax my goals a little bit. <clears throat> so if you are not able to meet your daily goals, dilute your goals to such a small extent that you are able to meet your goals. And then slowly, slowly increase your goals so that you can meet them again. But at least have some template in your mind that by September you are done. You are done with your uh, course at least once, so you can at least do it one, once or twice again before your career. Right. Uh, Namula Dhanishri, your questions have already been answered. Uh, Pratiksha, how to answer a question that I am genuinely unable to in a PM? What do you do if you don't know an answer to a question? You can just say that you don't know. I, there were questions I was like, I am not very well, well versed about it, and uh, this is not something I have read about. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are not looking to, you know, one thing that what people think is that interviews are there, that they are there to uh, cancel you. or uh, uh, But they are not there for that. They, they want to understand you. Right. They are trying to see whether you fit in their organization or their. Uh, on what they think about what they should be there. So if you don't know something, you don't know something, right? You can say, I'm sorry, that is not something that I know about. But if you know something similar, you can say, I have read about about this though. If you want to talk about this, you can talk about this. Okay. Anu, extra having extracurricular experience is mandatory. It's not mandatory. I think it would add value if you have. But then it's not a mandatory requirement that you need to have extracurricular experience. The thing is that if you are talking about the, the, the top, Five six, there that really helps you a lot. Right. But once you go down a little further, then it does not matter. Right. Uh, important question that has come about is uh, how do you analyze in data? 
that's answered asked by Ajay. That's an important question. So maybe if you can devote two minutes to it, how did you analyze your aim for impact? Okay, so first of all, like once you open your aim card, you see there are like different things. Uh, you see there are sections about easy questions, hard questions, uh, then moderate questions. So you see that which were which areas you were able to score well. You know, was it easy questions or moderate questions or, or, or hard questions? Then you see that second thing what you see is that how much time you devoted on every question. So what you would see in the, in the first few attempts of your aim cards is that there are hard questions and you have devoted four minutes and you did not solve them. And there will not be one question like that. There will be like five or six questions like that. So now you have to understand that if there's a hard question, you leave it. You go to the next one. Because you know that you have not Sara uh, Sara You'll never be able to attempt every question. So you have to leave a few questions. So over time, you have to understand that these are the hard questions and I can leave it. And if I have time, I can come back later. Right. Uh, so that was one of the biggest thing that identifying the questions. Okay. Second thing what you do is then you see how you attempted the question. And sometimes what you do is you what I did was I attempted the questions that I did not attempt the first time. So then I was able to see that whether how I should be going. Like once what I did was AIMCAD I did from question one to thirty two. I, I tried to go that way. Next AIMCAD what I did was go from thirty two to one, go the reverse direction. So, so you, uh, you experiment with your aim card in your so question solving abilities. Next one, what I think did was, if I uh, this is this is more towards the ILR. If I'm reading the question and I understood the question in the first uh, say 30 seconds, then how I will solve it? I'm going to give time to it. If not, straight up next question. Then I saw that I'm leaving a lot of questions. Then next time I was like, okay, no, no, not 30 seconds, 22 minutes. If I were to do two minutes, then I'll then I'll go to the. Uh, if I'm able to understand it, I'll try to solve it. If I'm not able to solve it, then go to the next question. That way. So you have to understand that. Uh, basically, what you have to understand is how you are uh, managing your time during the examination. And since there are 20 aim cards, you have enough uh, aim cards to try and uh, try and test different strategies. Like I would tell you a stupid strategy I tested in uh, VARC. Was that I'll, I'll not read the paragraph because paragraph reading takes a lot of time. I'll read the question and then see whether I'll try to like uh, see where the question lands and read the paragraph at that time and then try to solve it. And that was the worst way as a score of my life. So, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people actually try to adopt. Okay, okay. So, uh, so that way, so again, when you're doing aim cuts, sorry, back to answer the aim cuts. So, aim cuts, you see that what strategy you did and how it reflected. And then you think about the how it, how it differed from the strategy from last time. And again, as I said, spending some time is why you would spend more time is now you solve the questions that you were not able to solve. And then then you go open the video lecture and see how they solved in the video lecture, whether what they did that you agree with it or not, whether there's an easier way to solve it than what they're doing. Because sometimes there are easier ways to solve it. What you have in your video lecture is probably a very long way. They sometimes answer the right in front of you, and if you make an assumption, you can solve it in like two minutes. But they'll go a roundabout way and take ten minutes to solve the question. So yeah, think about think about the question. Think about different ways of solving the question. That's what I would say. All right. So one last question from Dipali. Uh, what should be the strategy for quantitative mocks? Sometimes I miss the easiest ones. I think that's that's a problem which would be there with a lot of people that they miss the easiest ones in quant. So what strategy would you advise to the question? So eventually I came to that strategy only. But then I, I look at the question and I think that I can solve it as well. I would not go like if I think that I cannot solve it, I'll go for the next this thing. Because quant, there are a lot of questions and a lot of questions are solved. Like one thing is taught. I mean one thing when you told that you have to go through every set, every question before trying to solve it, but sometimes it's not feasible. You, you need to like by the time you are giving your CAC, you would have practiced many times. That you know by even looking at it, like you read the first few few uh, sentences, uh, sorry, first few words, and you know that yeah, this is a soluble question. Do it. Not it might be an easy question at that time. And you think in the first few words that you can solve it. Go to the next one because there will definitely be another easy question over where you can solve. And yeah, and don't worry about. There will always be easy questions that you can, you will miss. I'm telling you, I uh, in my quant. Okay, quant was my weakest during my mock. It came cuts. Okay, that was a that was 
consistently my lowest score in this thing. But in my CAT, I scored the highest in quant. I actually attempted 26 questions in quant out of the 32 or 33 that are there. And I and I reached up to question 29. Like I left here or question 30. I left here for four questions. And uh, last 30 seconds, I knew that last 30 seconds I cannot solve anything because it's very difficult to solve. So I was going through the questions and I thought the last four questions were the easiest of the bunch. So if I had if I had gone in the reverse direction, I might have solved three or four questions extra. Okay. Right? But what is done is done. There's no point thinking about it. You will miss easy questions. You will get easy questions. Just consistently keep doing it. Try different methods. See how much time you want to spend every question, and then move on. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining and us for giving so much of your time yes. <laughs> and sharing your experience with all the students who are watching us. Uh, thank you all of you for joining us over here. I hope so much experience and whatever he has advised you would help you in your CAD preparation. Thank you so much, so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. All the best, everyone.